Lift up the word and repeat after me. I believe this is the word of God. I believe what God says because it is impossible for God to lie. It's amazing how many people email me and get after me because I say it's impossible for God to lie. Even though the scripture says it, there's a lot of people that believe that God lies to them. But let me tell you something. God does not lie. Now, there's a lot of things happening on the news. I don't know if any of you have turned on the television lately and listened to the news, but you're going to find that there's a lot of news. Some of it's fake, but whether it's fake or real, the way they present it, it's all bad. Because good news doesn't sell. It's kind of like on the Weather Channel. Do you turn on the Weather Channel on a sunny day when you're going on a picnic and the people there say, everything's nice today? Or do you turn it on when there's the possibility of an imminent tornado or hurricane and then you turn it on? We have a tendency sometimes to seek out bad news. But the Word of God is full of good news. Now, we are at the very end as Loretta said earlier, we are at the very end of the end of days. We are in that thin sliver of time before Jesus returns, and things are happening, and things are happening quick. And in the world, as a dear friend of mine that I'll be with this week, Gary Stearman, said, we're approaching a time of raging insanity. And in some areas, we're already there. I mean, not we're there, you know, the world is. Uh, we're seeing things that we thought we would never see in, in our lifetime. When I was in high school, things that were considered unacceptable and in some cases illegal are now considered open, openly fine. They're, they're promoted even. Uh, there's, uh, I never thought I'd ever see two lumberjacks carrying axes kiss each other. But, you know, they have commercials now where they have medication for lumberjacks that kiss each other. Um, but see, today we're seeing the flaunting of sin in all forms of the media and sin on television. Uh, we wonder why our kids grow up not understanding the principles in the Word of God sometimes. We wonder why they grow up and they have sex outside of marriage. We wonder why they grow up, grow up and they do some of the things that the Bible says not to do. But that's all they see on television. I mean, you, you turn on TV and, and you know, people that... And it, it's good that they get married, but it's like marriage is just something that the world doesn't see as real. You know, the, the world and the 60s, my generation brought a lot of this in. I know I, I don't look that old, but, uh, you know, we, we had a, we didn't, Loretta and I didn't, but the world had the philosophy, the hippie philosophy, if it feels good, do it. And if you can get it lit, smoke it. <laughs> you know, I mean, people were smoking everything. Ah, it was a smoking generation. But we're living in the last days and the enemy is pulling out all the stops. And uh, I've seen something in the church that's a little troubling. And, uh, and that is that many Christians are fearing the end time events. They're fearing, they have a fear of what's coming. Now we know that there's some bad stuff coming. But we should know who we are and whose we are and we should not be living in fear like the world does. Now, I understand why the world lives in fear, because they have no hope. But we do have. We should not live in fear. Now, there's a battle raging, and that battle is constantly raging in the invisible world. And you've heard me preach this for three decades here. It's between faith and fear. These are the two spiritual forces that you can't see that you can operate in 
And faith is the spiritual force of our Father, the great I Am. And fear is the spiritual force of the enemy. Jesus wants us to walk in faith. Remember, in Luke 18.8, Jesus said, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, is he, will He find faith on the earth? Well, we should be able to say He will, and He'll find it in us. See, faith is simply believing God and what He said. Fear comes from believing the enemy and what he says. God brings us the good news, the good report. The enemy brings us the bad report. One of the worst types of fear is the fear of the unknown. And that's why many people fear the end of days. It's amazing how much of the church has no idea what's going to happen. Because there's a, a lack of teaching from the pulpit on what's going to happen. But see, we are not like the world. We, we know what's going to happen. And because of that, there should be no fear. The future is not unknown to us. Now, many times, the Scriptures that we are told in the church, look, the Word of God says that we, the church, that we are not appointed to the wrath to come. What is the wrath to come? That is when Jesus, during the Great Tribulation, and He's the one that coined the phrase, the Great Tribulation. Jesus, during the Great Tribulation, out of the heavens is going to pour out His wrath on an unrepentant earth and it's not so much the Antichrist, although he is a bad guy, the beast and the false prophet, they do all kinds of crazy things and they bring great turmoil on the earth. But if you'll read your book called the Bible, in the part of Revelation where it talks about what's happening on the earth, it's the Lord pouring out the wrath onto the unrepentant earth. Now, you are the bride of Christ. If you're born again, you're a part of a church. You're the bride of Christ. And when Jesus appears in the sky with all the saints, the spirit bodies of the saints who have gone on, then we who are alive and all the born again believers that have passed physically, we will all be caught up to, with him and we'll be in the clouds in heaven in paradise with him. Before he pours out his wrath. Now think about this. Jesus is not a wife beater. He's not going to leave his bride here on the earth and then pour out his wrath upon his bride. That's why the scriptures tell us over and over and over in many different places that we are not appointed to the wrath to come. Now, are there going to be some bad things happen on the earth before we are caught up? Yes, of course. You're, we're going to see tremors of the earthquakes. We're, we're going to see the precursor of many of these things. And probably right now the Antichrist is alive and living on, on the earth right now. He's not going to be revealed until 120 days uh, into how many? Three and a half years? How many days? How many? 1,200 and 1,250 days. How many? 1,260? I'm just checking you out there. All right. 1,260 days, three and a half years. So that means if He's revealed then, then He has to be alive before the rapture and probably doing some things. Interesting. So we may see the precursor of all this before the wrath is poured out on a sinful earth. But everything that we do, now here's what you've got to understand, these two opposing forces, faith and fear, we have to make a choice on whether we're going to walk in faith or whether we're going to walk in fear. We have to make that choice. 
you know, the Scripture says in Deuteronomy 30, 19, he, the Lord said, I place before you life and death. Choose, choose life. Well, why would He tell us to choose life? Because we're morons? I mean, here. Here's, here's food and here's poison. Choose the food. I mean, come on. Why would He have to tell us? He has to tell us because there's a lot of people choosing death. A lot of people choosing death. So we have these two spiritual forces right now, and one will bring your deliverance, and one will put you into bondage, and the choice is yours. Just like Adam and Eve, they had a choice to make. You have a choice to make. He's placed before us faith and fear, which are you going to choose? If you choose faith, faith is simply believing God's Word. Just believing what He says. That's faith. Fear is what? Believing what the enemy says. And the enemy has nothing good for you. John 10.10 says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Well, who's he coming to kill? You. Who's he coming to, to steal from? You. Whose life is he wanting to destroy? Yours. That's what the enemy wants for you. But the rest of that verse says what the Lord wants for us. He wants us to have life, and He wants us to have it abundantly. So, who are you going to choose? Hmm. Well, there's a lot of doom and gloom being prophesied, and this is part of the reason that there's fear. Because some groups are focusing more on the fear than they are on the faith. They're focusing more on the destruction than they are on the deliverance. And we, we need to be focused on Him. Now, it's true. There's going to be a lot of devastation on the earth. And the Antichrist has got plans. But God has a plan too. And His plan is deliverance. You know, it's, it's interesting. One of the things I've done in my life Oh boy, what a life. But one of the things, I was uh, on the board of a bank holding company. I was a director on another bank. And uh, one of the things that's taught is how to spot a counterfeit bill. And you've all read stories on this, I'm sure. But the way to spot a counterfeit bill is you train the people to look at the real ones. And if you, if you look at the real bill long enough and study it, you'll be able to find the spot the counterfeit. Well, it's, it's the same way in the church. You don't have to study the devil. Now, we need to know, the Bible says, Paul said, be not ignorant of his devices. We need to know what he's doing. You need to keep an eye on the enemy. But you don't live with the enemy. And you keep your focus on what's going to deliver you, not what's attempting to bind you. You know, John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus said this. He said, if you abide my word, my word abides in you. You're my disciples indeed. And then, what's the result is, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. The fear that the enemy brings will bind you. It's okay to know what the enemy's doing, but don't live your life focused on the enemy. Live your life focused on the truth. See, Jesus is coming back, and that's good. Look at what, look at what the Scripture says. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God. This is... 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Does that sound like fun? Okay. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So where does your comfort come from? 
I know we have a, a retired English teacher in here today, and I just finished a sentence with a preposition. I apologize. You really don't care, do you? But your deliverance and the truth comes from focusing on the true. You still need to not be ignorant of the enemy's devices, but don't live your life studying the enemy's devices. See, too many people feel like they're alone. They're alone. They just, they have nobody. But let me tell you something. You're not alone. You are surrounded. This room is full of the angels of God. And what do those angels do? Well, according to Scripture, Hebrews 1.14, they are ministering spirits. And they are here on this earth to minister for those who will inherit salvation. Who will inherit salvation? Is that you? Well, the angels of God are here to minister for you. To do the things that you can't do. What activates them to do what you can't do? What is it? Is it faith or fear? Keep in mind, faith and fear are spiritual substances. Faith, Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. It is a substance in the realm of the Spirit. You can't see it, but it is. It's a substance in the realm of the Spirit. And it's like a catalyst. And uh, many of you know, years ago, my family owned a, a, a boat factory in another state. And uh, we didn't own all of it, we just own 90% of it. <laughs> and we manufactured thousands of boats that are, many of them are still being ran on the Lake of the Ozarks now. However, they were fiberglass boats. And fiberglass, many people don't realize it, but fiberglass is a liquid. It's a liquid. And it's either sprayed or it's poured into a mold. And it will stay a liquid unless you add the catalyst to it. And sometimes it just takes a few drops. It doesn't take a lot. It just takes a few drops of the catalyst that they'll call, sometimes they call it the hardener. And you put that in that fiberglass and you stir it and then you pour it in. Then you spray it into the mold. And in a little bit, it gets very, very strong. And it becomes whatever you spray it into. If you spray it into a boat mold, it becomes a boat. You, you spray it into a countertop mold, it becomes a countertop. You spray it into a car mold in General Motors, it becomes a Corvette. But it becomes what you need it to become, but you have to add the catalyst to it. If you don't, it will just remain a slow, gooey liquid and just be gooey forever, basically. Faith is the catalyst in the realm of the Spirit that activates God's promise to you. What it is that you need, you take that promise and you take that promise before the Lord. You remind Him of His promise. That's what He says to do. Remind me of the promise. And you take that promise to Him and when you add your faith to it, then that promise becomes real. You know, the Scripture says in Psalm 103.20 that angels are waiting, and, and you've heard me say this many times, but you need to understand this. Angels are waiting to hear the voice of God's Word so that they can do what God's Word says. And the way they hear the voice of His Word is out of our mouths. We are the body of Christ here on the earth and we speak His Word. And when we speak His Word that comes out of the abundance of our heart because we believe it, then that's faith. 
And then that word comes alive. The angels are sent to work. And they make that word come to pass. Doing, ministering to you, for you, doing the thing that you can't do. Faith is important. But see, fear on the other side, fear will paralyze you and fear will keep you from receiving the promise of God. There's no place that we are to go into fear. We are always to approach with faith. The apostle, looking at the person, he saw that that person had enough faith to be healed. Jesus said, woman, your faith has made you well. Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. In Romans, it tells us that anything that's not of faith, in other words, anytime you don't believe God, it's a sin. Faith is an extremely important thing. We're saved by faith. Ephesians 2.8, for by grace we've been saved through faith. Faith is extremely important. What, what you believe is what you receive. And if you want to receive death and destruction, then focus on the enemy. Now, now don't, don't get me wrong. You, you, we still have authority over the power of the enemy. We are still supposed to cast out demons. We rule and reign. We're to take our authority. We're to use our authority. We're not to be afraid to use our authority. We're not to be afraid to take authority. We should boldly stand in the face of the enemy when he's spouting his lies at us and just say the truth. We don't have to get in denial. We don't have to get into the face of the enemy and say, what you're saying is not true. No, we don't have to say, what you're saying is not true. You said this and that's not true. No, you say, God said this and this is true. We walk in faith, not in denial. I'm getting excited. Don't get caught in worrying so much about what's going to happen, about the bad news, that it becomes a distraction so that you don't look at the good news. Focus on the truth and you won't Fall for the lie. Wow, that's good. Hmm. Well, the truth is decaying into sin. The truth is the world is decaying into sin. How do I know that's true? That's because of what the Bible says. It's a sinful world. But for the true church, we're glorious. And let me tell you something. I'm going to close with this. And you just need to focus on this. Your best days are yet to come. Amen. We move from glory to glory. And every stage of glory is better than the stage before. You know the old song, every day with Jesus is better than the day before. Well, that's true. Every day with Jesus is better than the day before. And we, we need to not look at the future, not look down, down through time, and, and see the future as something that we're going to have to endure. We need to see the future as something that we, we get to rejoice in. And we are looking forward to the blessed hope. Because, you know, the Word of God says, look up. Our redemption draws nigh. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. I'm ready. How many of you are ready just to go right now? I mean, I'm ready. I, I'm ready for that trumpet to toot. And I'm ready to shoot and get out of here. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. And I'll tell you something. What Jesus has for me is better than anything that anyone, anything on earth could have for me. My future, your future, it's bright. There may be some dark things that happen along the way. But rebuke them, cast them out, and don't let, them, don't let the fear of the enemy get inside of you. We have nothing to fear. I'm done. All right. Stand up. Hallelujah. 
Hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. We thank you for your word. In the name, in the name, the name above all names. Amen.